Welcome back to the Best PT Podcast. This is episode 3.2, Neuroanatomy, Central Nervous System Vascularization and Support Systems. Starting with the Circle of Willis, providing blood to the brain. It's heavily anastomosis, so lots of redundant blood supply. Brain vascularization stems from the internal carotid arteries and the vertebral arteries. Major arteries of the brain, the anterior cerebral artery, supplies the anterior frontal lobe and the medial surfaces of the frontal and parietal lobes. Lesions here can cause contralateral lower extremity motor and sensation impairment, loss of bowel and bladder control, behavioral impairment, intelligence and cognitive impairments, neglect, aphasia, apraxia, agraphia, perseveration, and mutism. Middle cerebral artery is the most common site for an infarct, supplies the outer cerebrum, the basal ganglia, anterior and posterior internal capsules, the bunumen, and the palladium lentiform nucleus. Lesions here can lead to Wernicke's aphasia if it's in the dominant hemisphere, anonymous hemianopsia, apraxia, flat affect in right hemisphere lesions, contralateral weakness and sensation loss, upper extremity greater than lower extremity, impaired spatial perception, anosognosia in the non-dominant hemisphere, which is an inability to detect that you have impairments. Posterior cerebral artery supplies some of the midbrain, the subthalamic nucleus, the basal nucleus, the thalamus, the inferior temporal lobe, the occipital and occipital parietal cortices. Lesions here cause contralateral impairment to detect pain and temperature, contralateral hemiplegia, thalamic pain syndrome, ataxia and aptoid movements, coriform movements, anomia, prosopagnosia, which is the inability to recognize faces, hemibolissimus, which is a very rare type of choreiform movement resulting in the appearance of flailing ballistic movements of the limbs, visual agnosia, anonymous hemianopsia, dyslexia, movement impairments, and cortical blindness in the case of bilateral lesions. The vertebral basilar artery supplies the lateral midbrain, superior cerebellum, the medulla, pons, thalamus, and occipital cortex. Lesions here can cause comas, hemiplegia or tetraplegia, mutism, locked-in syndrome, vertigo, nystagmus, dysphagia, dysarthria, syncope, and ataxia. The superior cerebellar artery supplies the superior one-half of the cerebellum and parts of the midbrain. It can compress on the trigeminal nerve and cause trigeminal neuralgia, which is lancing pain along the trigeminal nerve distribution. The anterior inferior cerebellar artery supplies the anterior undersurface of the cerebellum. Lesions here can cause anterior inferior cerebellar syndrome, AICA, also known as lateral pontine syndrome. This results in vertigo, vomiting, nystagmus, dysarthria, a loss of balance towards the side of the lesion, hemiataxia, a complete loss of facial, facial sensation, facial paralysis, and hearing loss. And the final artery is the posterior inferior cerebellar artery, which supplies the upper half of the medulla oblongata, the inferior cerebellar peduncles, and the posterior undersurface of the cerebellum. Lesions here can cause lateral medulla, medullary syndrome, also known as posterior inferior cerebellar artery syndrome, PICA, also known as Wallenberg syndrome. This results in sensory impairment, the loss of pain and temperature affecting the trunk and extremities contralateral to the infarct, and sensory impairment, loss of pain and temperature affecting the face and cranial nerves ipsilateral to the infarct, along with dysarthria, dysphagia, and dysphonia, which is the inability to control your voice. Moving on to support structures, we have the meninges, three layers of connective tissue in the brain and spinal cord. The dura mater is the outermost layer with four folds. 
In the brain, it lines the skull periosteum above the subdural space. Beneath that, we have the arachnoid matter. The middle layer is impermeable. It surrounds the brain loosely, and it's superficial to the subarachnoid space. The subarachnoid space is important because it contains the cerebral spinal fluid and the circulation system for cerebral spinal fluid. And finally, the innermost layer is the pia matter. It covers the brain directly and forms the choroid plexus within the brain ventricular system. The ventricular system, four fluid-filled cavities that contain special tissues called the choroid plexus that creates cerebral spinal fluid. Cerebral spinal fluid is a clear fluid that cushions the brain and spinal cord and is produced constantly at a rate of 500 to 700 milliliters a day. The final support structure is the blood-brain barrier, which consists of the meninges, glial cells, and the capillary beds supplying the brain. They form a selectively permeable membrane that allows some molecules to enter and does not allow others to enter. That's it for this episode covering vascularization and support structures of the central nervous system within neuroanatomy. As always, the outline will be in the show notes. The next episode, 3.3, will deal again with neuroanatomy, this time of the spinal cord. Thank you for joining me.